As you probably know, Process Lasso has been a FPS booster rumor for years now. I've covered it on the channel in the past, and I'm making this revisit video as I haven't visited it for a while, and, well, there's a specific reason for that. To give you the TLDR right now, Process Lasso might help you if only use physical cores helps you in-game, as it'll make sure that the game is running on cores that you actually want it to, and you can schedule it as you will and mess with priorities and stuff like that. For most people, you won't see a dramatic uplift, and honestly, you probably won't see anything at all. Process Lasso is really good at controlling processes, and honestly, it should be used more to control background processes that you don't want interfering than actually messing with the game's priorities itself. But of course, I'll explain that as we go along. If you want to download Process Lasso to test it yourself, I will have that linked in the description, along with all the other links that I used for research in this video. And of course, if you guys enjoy this content, make sure to hit the usual liking and subscribing buttons, all that YouTube stuff. It really does help me out genuinely. And seriously, thank you guys so much for the support on the recent stuff. It's been just amazing, but I won't stall or take up any more of your time. Let's get straight to it. But yeah, to install it, you can simply go to bitsum.com. They'll have Process Lasso right here. You can just download the free version, but keep in mind it will have just like a little pop-up saying, hey, this is the best way for us to advertise for Pro. You just wait a maximum of like 15 seconds and you're in the application. So let me just open that up right here because I've had it open in the background for a little bit. And let's go through what most people commonly recommend. If you've seen this on other channels, You've probably gone here, they've told you to find the Tarkov VS EXE, you click on CPU priority, you're saying always to high, you go to CPU affinity, you're trying to disable hyper-threading, and you're like, oh, this doesn't do anything, that's odd. And then you go to IO priority and set it to high, Lord knows why, and then you induce performance mode without knowing what that actually does. I'm going to cover all of these in this video, along with some other settings that you might not commonly see covered in other videos. I feel like I need to do this application do justice as there's a lot of just misnomers around it, and I, I think it actually deserves some love, even though it's not the huge FPS booster for everybody like everybody says, but there is some cool stuff in here that you can use. Just because I'm making this video, I might actually start using this again, not because there's actual major performance gains, but it might help me control what applications are running on what cores when I'm, say, streaming. I'm gonna cover them from top to bottom, so I'll go from CPU priority and slowly climb down uh, some of these settings that are most important so that you can have an idea what each one of those settings does. I'll also be showing you the actual Bitsum documentation. They have this wonderful page that I'll link below that, surprisingly, it's like they're an actual company. They actually list what all of their options do, and they explain it, and you, if you want to learn more about it, look at this. It will be linked below. Please look at this, because genuinely, it's it, it's amazing. It's frankly amazing. So let's cover the priorities first. You've probably seen people recommending to set to high priority inside of this application here, because that supposedly helps the CPU get more resources, which is the most vague thing I've heard in my entire life. As Bitsum puts it, and as I said before, it's generally best to focus on lowering priorities of background and unimportant processes rather than raising the priorities of important ones. And this is simply due to how Windows schedules processes, uh, especially with some of the efficiency changes that they've done with Intel's efficiency cores and their scheduling for that. And I'll, I'll cover that later in the video. You've probably not noticed much difference with setting it to high, and I'd recommend instead, if you have RGB software like IQ, uh, EVGA Precision X1, which is not wholly a RGB software, but still, any of those softwares that you use to control either RGB or peripheral preferences, stuff like that, I'd recommend instead tailoring those processes to be at a lower priority than standard. By doing this, this ensures that the game is not interrupted by other processes that have a similar priority. You can do that the same way you've seen in those other videos where they change the priority of the task. Let's say, and I'll find a task just for the hell of it. Let's take the uh, game bar here for, for Xbox game bar. If I want to lower the priority of this forever, I can just simply right click on it, go to CPU priority, go to the always tab, not current, because if you change it as current, it could change back at any moment. Go to always, and then set it to the processor priority that you want to set it to. Since I don't use game bar, I'm just going to go ahead and set it to idle because I don't use game bar and that'll just ensure that it's just not doing anything in the background unless I'm unless it's free. And next, the infamous CPU affinity disable hyper threading slash SMT wonderfulness. This is an interesting one because this 
in theory, right, if, if you think about it from simply a logical perspective, uh, if I go in game here, you, you think that in your settings, disabling hyper threading would be similar to only use physical cores in game because logically what these settings mean is that they are disabling the second thread that is going to each one of the cores on your CPU, ensuring that for the game or for whatever process, it's only running on the actual physical cores on your CPU. Let's say, for example, we have a four core CPU that's hyper threaded, which means it has eight threads total. There's two threads of commands going to each CPU or core. I don't know why I say CPU instead of core, but you get what I mean. Going into process lasso, Tweaking it here ensures that the application is, as you can see right here in the top, only running on those certain set of cores. Let me actually get out of the menu here so you can see. So for example, right, I have a 13600K. It has six performance cores. So you can see these are each hyper-threaded. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then it has eight efficiency cores, which long story short are non-hyper-threaded cores that are mainly meant to do background tasks, help with productivity work, and they're not always used for gaming, at least in an efficient manner, ironically. Ignoring these eight here, we can focus on the six here and see that since I have my CPU affinity set to be those six physical cores, it is running on those six physical cores and everything else that is being utilized, mainly the e-cores, is just for background tasks. If I go in here and adjust this, so let's say I hit select CPU affinity here, and then I go ahead and recheck the hyper-threaded, not the hyper-threaded, but the threads of those cores and don't check my e-cores. Since I don't have use only physical cores checked in game, the task should switch out once the rule sets in. As you can see, Core zero now has some usage on its thread one. And depending on if the game needs it, it'll swap out usage as it will. It'll schedule in whatever space you give it as far as CPU cores are concerned. And now if I go back into that select CPU affinity under the always tab, and then check the E cores, we should see some usage in the E cores now that I check this on. So let's see here. Yeah, as you can see, the game started using a little bit of those E cores. And you might actually see my performance might have gone up a little bit in game, though I'm not sure. I wasn't actually checking, though I'll write it down in in, uh, in notes if it actually did. This is because Windows is automatically scheduling some tasks from the application to run on those e-cores. It can use a little bit more power and produce a little bit more heat, but it is actually benefiting my performance in this case, at least from if those numbers were correct. To give an example, somebody in my comments said that they had two identical computers with a 5900X in them, and the only difference was that one was using only use physical cores in game and the other was not. And the FPS difference they saw in raid in the same place was 15 to 20. And he was really confused by this. The reason for it is because using only physical cores helped on that specific system to improve performance. In the same manner, those of you who use process lasso and check only use physical cores here, which is labeled in this case as disable hyper threading, essentially the same thing, will likely see the exact same benefit that you see from checking that in game. Do be weary though, as if you check both of them, you could have some issues where the game is not properly recognizing that all of the cores present that it's able to use are actually physical cores. So if you're doing this method in game, I highly recommend not doing it in process lasso. And if you're doing it here in process lasso, I highly recommend leaving it unchecked in game. I wanna actually do an experiment here. Let me, let me, let me try something real quick. <laughs> oh yeah don't do that oh that's just on the efficiency cores oh that's not good <laughs> but you can do stuff like that right you can do just like crazy stuff like that and and set it to whatever cores you want it to actually run on and this could actually help your performance by ensuring that it's running on the proper threads and disabling hyper threading like i said or you could do this with other applications in the background if you know that they're not needed. You could just put them over on cores that are not properly utilized by the game. I spent enough time on that though. So let's, let's move to the next thing here. And that is CPU sets. CPU sets is essentially the same thing as CPU affinity, but it's more of a suggestion for the application. So for example, since I'm on a 13th gen CPU, Windows suggests that the process be ran on my performance cores because while I have performance and efficiency cores, it's a game, it wants to schedule it on the fastest cores. This is something you can't mess with at least through process lasso because it's a pro thing. So if you wanna pay for it and have it 
have work with those suggestions, you can totally do that. But you do need to pay for Pro in order to access this feature. But you can think of CPU sets if you just want to learn about it as a suggested version of CPU affinity. IO priority controls the memory and network in and out, which is I slash O input output priority for any given application. I was not able to measure any performance difference between setting this from high to normal, etc. And again, with this setting, I saw on a Bitsum forum post that I will link in the description that most people were suggesting, just like Bitsum themselves were suggesting, to instead use IO priority to limit some other applications, setting them to lower priority if they're not necessary applications, like for example, the game you're running. And this could also improve performance. This is partially bundled with the CPU priority as a whole, however, same thing with memory priority. So these two, just keep in mind, are, are bundled in with this most of the time, but this will help force it if it's not doing the IO prior priority swap properly. That was a mouthful. I actually wanted to pull up this for memory priorities just so you can see it. Again, this is linked below if you want to read more about it. As you can see here, Bitsum says that a process's memory priority determines the default priority of the physical pages that are added to the process working set by the threads of that process. So these bits of memory that you're having in your RAM, for example, are set in different priorities and it will trim the lower priority ones before higher priority pages to ensure that whatever's being most recently used isn't affected by the trimming. Having this at a lower priority means that it will take longer for the process to trim memory. This is something that is also, like I said, bundled with the CPU, CPU priority. And the reason I'm explaining this so much is because Process Lasso has a thing built in called Smart Trim, which works to trim memory in this manner, rather than brute forcing cleaning stuff like, for example, uh, ISLC does or the empty standby list. It has a smarter approach nudging processes to let go of some memory and thus ensuring that it's not letting go of packages that are essential. So if you want to test a smart trim with your RAM and escape from Tarkov, you can go up here and go to the memory tab and enable it. Or if you feel like you'd want to just trim Tarkov's memory usage, you can go ahead and go to escape from Tarkov and right click on it as I just did and hit trim memory. And as you'll see in the top left, Tarkov will start to let go of RAM that is no longer being utilized or needed. From what I saw though, just in some anecdotal testing, it does do a bit of a worse job when compared to the game's automatic RAM cleaner. And that's obviously because the game itself knows what is priority in comparison to what Process Lasso thinks it should dismiss. But it's still another way that you can do it if you wanna go that route. Getting to the latter half of the settings here, we got Power Profile, which determines the power profile for an application that's running if you have like power profiles set in your power options. I have ultimate performance power plan set on by default, but of course you might have just high performance. You can just have it set like that. Please do not, don't set this to power saver. I, I've, I've had to tell a couple people that they shouldn't do that. And um, that was, that was the source of their issues. So just ensure you're not on power saver and you should honestly be fine. This is another premium setting here, efficiency mode, but this does control if processes are labeled to be run on peer e cores, that you can of course do this manually with CPU affinity. If you're not on a Intel 12th, 13th or 14th, 14th, wow, gen CPU, this then signals that that process is, as this says, not time critical so that it can be ran at a lesser clock speed if it's being ran while other things are being ran that are not important. Again, this is a premium setting, so, or a pro setting, so I won't spend too much time on it, but yeah, that's what that setting does. And then finally, let's finish it off with induced performance mode. This is probably one of the funnier settings that I've seen because if they read the documentation on what this does, they probably wouldn't have been recommending it so much. It's still important, don't get me wrong, but it's only important when you have their pro balance software running in the background when ProBalance just is a prioritization software that they made, so you can see right here, it's to maintain PC responsiveness during high CPU workloads. So you really only need this when your CPU is running at pretty high workloads, as in like, for example, if it's utilizing a lot of your CPU and Tarkov does not do that. So you really don't need to worry about this as much. Though they do recommend to enable this if you're having issues with prioritization. As you can see, their main excuse for this, as I said, is adjustments in the ProBalance algorithm. If you wanna learn more about ProBalance, I do have a whole section down here as well, which again, documents link in the description. Uh, on the screen now, just so you guys know, I'll put the performance numbers that I have with CPU Affinity 
just so you guys are able to see that it's not really that much difference and honestly i get the most performance when i have everything just stock so yeah it's your call but i hope all the data that i provided in this video helps you at least learn what all these settings do because if there's one thing that i noticed with a lot of these videos talking about process lasso they don't actually cover what this stuff does and it just spreads a lot of misinformation and i much rather just be clear with you guys on how this is working and what the process lasso is actually doing than to give you guys some false sense of hope and tweaking some of these settings to improve performance again there is chance for you to get more performance but it all depends on if you benefit from only using physical cores this can also help you if you have a lot of background tasks or a lot of rgb software things like that that can eat up system resources from the game I'd recommend tweaking those to a lower priority, like I said, instead of tweaking Tarkov up. With that though, I hope this video helped you a lot. If it did, of course, hit the YouTube buttons. I'll be making more videos like this, covering other optimization tweaks and stuff like that, and all the other BS that you see on the internet, hopefully clearing it up a bit more and explaining why some of it is legitimate and some of it is not. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you so much for the growth on the channel recently. It's been awesome. Feel free to pop in my stream. I should be streaming the night that this video goes live, along with every single Friday at 6.30 p.m. CST. So yeah, pop on in, say hi, uh, watch me get some sick kills. And yeah, for now, this will be Clem. Clocking out. Later.